Hello, how wonderful to see you this Tuesday afternoon here in England, UK. My name is Esther and you're watching my Facebook or you might be catching this on replay over on YouTube. This is Stampin' Star Creations. Nice to have you with me today. Uh, I've got some new product in hand, so I thought I'd do a little playing with the new product. And I've had a bit of a play already and I had lots of fun colouring in these images. So I thought I'd recreate a card that I've made for you. Uh, made for me, <laughs> you've not seen it yet, <laughs> using the new Happiness Abounds stamp set. So I'll show you as I go along. Um, if you see my unboxing, you'll know that this stamp set comes with papers and it comes with dies as well. So nice to see you, Matt. Thank you for joining me this afternoon. I'm going to turn you around and see what we're going to do today. OK, here's the stamp set I was referring to. I was thinking about maybe colouring it in different colours, which, do you know what, I might change my mind. Oh, do I change my mind? Yeah, let's, let's do it. Because that's, I've done that version already. I like to do a different version. So I'm going to bring in some reds and maybe some purples. Reds, purples and maybe... Oh, do we go orange? Yeah. Let's do oranges. Okay, let's do that combination instead. I've changed my mind. <laughs> I'm allowed. <laughs> um, it's nice to show variation of of a variety of with colouring and things like that because it shows you that you can do different things with it. So I'm just going to call up my other device so I can keep tracks of comments lovely jubblies okay so where are we hi there claire nice to see you this is happiness abounds here so it's a great set for coloring because these um stamps here will give you the outline shape of the stamp okay so um it's not a fixed coloured in stamp it's one that encourages you to color in and it's got some lovely sentiments to go with it as well so this is the new annual catalogue that goes live at the beginning of May, 3rd of May. We can't even see that. Focus, focus. No, it doesn't want to. It's too close. <laughs> Let's just draw you in there. Come on. 3rd of May. Starts 3rd of May to the 1st of May next year. So the front cover always kind of gives away a glimpse of what's inside. And this is the paper that I was referring to that goes with this set as well. And you've got the lovely display on the back. So if you want to get your hands on a proper paper copy, I know it's so different looking online. Um, with the paper copy, they do show you things which are to scale. So it will show you the size of the actual stamps in the catalogue, which makes such a big difference when you are trying to plan projects and get some ideas. And in your head, you might have an idea of what the stamps might, the size they are, but they look different in real life. So... I'm just going to mount these on blocks. So these are called photopolymer. They're clear, they're see-through stamps, so you can see exactly where you're stamping. And I'm just going to mount most of them. Let's get a bigger block. We're going to need some. Actually, let's not. You want when you mount stamps on a block, you want them to be roughly the same size as the stamp because you end up with ink around the edges, and that gives you. Um, you might get ink on your work if you do that. So, colouring in. I'm going to use black memento ink. And this is non-alcohol based. It's water based. So you want to use the opposite kind of ink pad with your alcohol markers compared to if you're doing watercolours. So water based ink with alcohol markers and alcohol based ink with watercolour. So actually this would look really nice in watercolour. So I'm just going to literally lay down my images on a piece of basic white cardstock. Now basic white is the name of the paper that Stampin' Up! sell. And it's particularly nice paper because it's got a lovely smooth consistency. So you might think, oh, how much for a bit of paper? But when you stamp on Stampin' Up!'s paper compared to non-Stampin' Up! kind of generic 
uh, shop bought paper, which is much or card, which is much cheaper, then you'll really see the difference. Um, sometimes when you're stamping on shop bought card, you get a bleed of the ink seeping out into other areas. So I might just do. Let's do. A, we might as well fill the page. I can see that Janice or somebody that looks like Janice has snuck in. Maybe it's not Janice. Um, <laughs> Hi there. Nice to see you. I shouldn't call you by your name. I should call you something else, shouldn't I? <laughs> Good morning, Miss Linda. Nice to see you. Right, I'm having these fairly spread apart because, 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 the wonderful Wizard of Oz. Um, it means that I can use my die cut shapes to cut these out afterwards. I'm going to see if I can... Oh, can I squeeze one in? Didn't plan that very well, but there you go. I really fancied the idea of should we do red roses and this? I'm thinking this to be a purpley colour. So I've got Blackberry Bliss here. I might also just grab out my rich raspberry. So I'm just going to do a little tester on my scrap here because sometimes you forget what the colours look like. So I want to have an idea of what's what. Okay, so this dark, the raspberry is a bit darker than the, okay. So, colouring in. Dark raspberry, dark rich raspberry. So I'm going to have my darker elements right in the depth of the flower petals. So it just involves a little bit of thinking, okay? And then straight away I'm going to come in with my next colour and start blending that out a bit more. And if you overlap the existing colour, it makes that colour darker. So it's worthwhile sometimes just taking your time with your colouring in. And I'm going to just come up to these. The top of the petals. So hopefully you can see that. What's Matt said? Has he said something? Happiness abounds when I see you. Oh, isn't he lovely? He's a keeper, that one. I mean, after 20 years, you'd hope so, wouldn't you? <laughs> Oh, what's going on there? I've got a funny black mark on my... I don't know what's happened there. So, the reason why I'm just using the colours at the same time is because while the colours are nice and wet, they are easier to work with. Where, if you leave them to dry out too much, you might find it's a little bit more tricky to blend the colours. So I'm going to work in with all these centre petals and then again you don't be scared to use the colour to go on top of the what you've already coloured because that just really helps you to blend those colours together and then coming in with my light and again just going over all those colours I've just done excuse the shakes on the table So when you take your time to colour and to get some blending down, it can make all the difference to how your project ends up looking. And it makes, particularly with flowers, it makes them look a lot more realistic. Good morning, Lisa. Lovely to see you. Hi, Louise and Shirley. So this is the dark, rich raspberry. And I'm just following around the edges of the petals because that's where the shadows would lie if you were to look at a real flower, I'm guessing. <laughs> it would, it would be a bit darker around where the petals are, trust me. <laughs> and don't be scared to mix and match your blends. Don't just feel that because there's a light and a dark, you've got to stick to those colours. You can really go to town with mixing 
um, other colours together and it gives you a whole new other colour palette to play with them. Now alcohol markers are a lot different from um, normal shell tips. Hi there Shaz, good to see you. Um, they're a lot more forgiving I guess. The, the colour sort of soaks straight to the back of the card and it allows you to, to keep colouring in. Oh, kids at school do it, where they keep colouring in, keep colouring in. And you know when you get a hole in your page because you've coloured too much, that, they do that a lot. <laughs> Whereas this, I think you could go on for quite a while and you won't get a hole in your page. What you do want to be careful of is when you come to the edge, not to keep colouring around the edge of your image because sometimes the colour will bleed over, over the edge. I'm just going to turn this around to show you. There you go, you can see how much colour that is soaking in. Hi there, Wendy. You didn't get a notification, so you had to search for me. Sorry, I was a few minutes late because I couldn't find my phone. <laughs> and um, I was a bit late at getting my notifications up. And hello, Deborah. Hi, Jenny. So hopefully you can see that depth of colour there. Now, what colour for the middle? Let's go nice and dark. And we use the dark rich raspberry, I think. And I'm just going to highlight these little spriglets in the middle like that. There you go. You can always go back over. And the other thing you can do also is to use the colour lifter. If you want some lighter areas, you can, you can lift the colour up. So, for example, if I wanted the back of these petals to be a little bit lighter, I could go over those with a colour lifter. And that kind of pushes the colour. Um, although it's called a colour lifter, it's more... Like a, a, it sort of spreads the colour at the back. And just give it a chance. It's a bit like those magic markers where you, as a children, as a child, used to add that white pen and it used to change the colour. Okay, good. So that's a nice purple. I'm going to call it a camellia. Hi, Renee. Nice to see you. So we're going to go reds next so that's my dark cherry cobbler i'm just doing a little tester sheet next to me because it's like i said sometimes you forget what the colors look like side by side and it's just to give you an idea of what you want to use where so that's i've done that in the wrong direction but that's okay so i've got the dark to the light there hi margaret okay time for the roses methinks so these are a bit more of a closer image. I'm wondering whether to do the opposite, whether to go dark to light, because sometimes, hmm, let's do it, let's just, okay, I'm going to go a little bit more sparingly with the, this is the dark cherry cobbler. <clears throat> and then I'm going to come in with my light cherry cobbler. Again, going over what I've already done to help me blend those colours together. And then... Oh, Ellie's sitting in her car because she's waiting for a meeting. Bless you. I might, I might not need that lighter one just yet. Look, that's got real impact. Can you guys see that? So again, you don't have to use four colours. You could use the three. So we're going for the dark along the edge of the petals. Just follow the lines of the image. I mean, Stampin' Up! do all the hard work for you. It's great. You don't have to think too hard. <laughs> and I leave a bit of room for the paler colour. And then coming in with the light real red. And if you want a nice bright deep um, depth of colour is the word I'm looking for. If you want a nice depth of colour um, 
the alcohol bar because these stamping blends are great for that. If you wanted something a bit not so deep maybe and a bit more whimsical you might want to opt for watercolours or you can also use, we have something called stamping uh, blender pens which means you pick up the colour directly from the ink pads but the joy of these is they're like colouring pens so you can kind of carry them around with you and just colour to your heart's content. Like I said, they're quite forgiving as well. Um, Ellie saying, so which stamp set is this? This is the new Happiness Abounds stamp set with all these lovely floral images in it. Sorry, my computer's beeping at me. Okay, so I'm going to try and speed up a little bit. <laughs> Famous last words. Trouble is, if you do speed colouring, which I have been known to do, I think it just doesn't look as effective. Sometimes, you know, if you take your time... To colour in images then I think you get a better result. I think you can speed colour if the image is a little bit um, if it's a smaller image. So how is everybody today? Sorry I've kind of rushed in, started colouring, started garbling at you about colouring in. And uh, I've not even asked how you are or how your day's going or what you've been up to. Has anybody had... Oops, it froze momentarily. Am I back yet? Yes, I am. Um, it's doing it again. Keeps freezing on me. Has anybody had Easter holidays? I know some people still have to work through. So my preference is just generally to do um, darker to light. I don't know why, it just is. I like to I like to use it as a guide to lay down the darker colour first and then add in the lighter. So here it's still quite bright, so I can come back in with the colour. You know, if you think, oh, that's not quite right, you can always swap it out. Come back in with the dark again. Good day so far. Matt's pleased to be back at work. How nice is that? To actually look forward to going back to work. It's a nice feeling, isn't it? When you're not dreading work. Okay, let's get some of these others coloured. <clears throat> Bit of a relaxed uh, life today, just a... For colouring in, just come and chill out and enjoy the colouring. Good day, uh, I've read that one. I'd like to get the happiness sweets, says Lisa. Lisa likes this one. Um, I think it's, yeah, I like the, the sweets. I like the, the fact that you get the dyes and then the papers and this is a bit different. And every year I say to myself, I must get some more floral images. <laughs> uh, particularly as I do a bit more stamped one sheet wonders and do my own designer series paper it would very much help if I did have um, some more ah, now this is light pumpkin so that should sit in the middle and I've got a dark pale papaya there so and what have I got here this is the dark pumpkin so we'll do dark in the very don't want to overdo the dark colour. Then we want dark pale papaya next. So going over where I've just laid that colour, but also I'm going to start laying down some shading. On one side of the petal and where the petals meet. Uh, Ellie's got to go for her meeting. Take care, Ellie. Oops. Now, that's darker. Oh, I've done the wrong colour. Never mind. I can go over it, look. Hope the meeting goes well, Ellie. Have a nice time. Well, if it's a nice meeting. Sometimes meetings aren't always, <laughs> aren't always nice, particularly. <laughs> I know that in Ellie's particular work that she does, it might not be a, 
a nice meeting, but you know what I mean. I hope it goes well, is what I should say. Okay, any more questions or anything? Thank you for the love hearts. I saw that. I accept love hearts, thumbs up, laughter. <laughs> there, hopefully that gives you a real idea as to the depth of colour that you can get with the blends. So I'm going to quickly do... No, I'm getting my colours mixed up again, aren't I? I'm going to quickly do these. Whoa, I didn't mean to have the thick end. By the way, it's got a thicker end. I can't remember which colour I use now. I think it was, yes. Yeah. So this is the light. Oh, thank you for the laughter and the emojis. <laughs> so you can share out the broadcast if this is on YouTube or Facebook. Um, if people enjoy colouring in, it might be for them, if they enjoy crafting or... Sometimes people stumble across videos that they've never seen before. I know I do, so especially now that um, Facebook have got those reels. I'm terrible. Scroll through them and they get a bit addictive. And before you know it, you're watching all sorts of funny videos of babies doing funny things or people doing life hacks on how to open a bottle of Coke or something crazy like that. Uh, you know the ones, come on, you've all been there. I mean, you get sucked, sucked in to watching stuff and before you know it, the time is whisked away and you're like, what am I doing? I should be doing something else more productive in my time. <laughs> but, you know, if this helps you today to relax, to start the day in a chilled manner, it gives you the incentive to think, oh, I want to craft or colour. Or just take a bit of time out for me. And good, go do that. And this world of busyness and hectic lives that we can lead. It's nice just to stop, take time. Shaz says, I often fall down the YouTube rabbit hole. <laughs> YouTube, Pinterest... Facebook, you name it. Okay, what have I got here? Just Jade. Now, I like Just Jade with uh, Soft Succulent. So let's test out these colours, my colour palette. Now, Just Jade is one of our colours that is going to retire soon. So if you love the colour, make sure you get your hands on it now. <laughs> because when the new catalogue goes live, and um, it's a goner. Right, because my leaves are a little bit smaller, I'm going to use a different colour for... Um, I use soft succulent for this one. So for this, I like sometimes, you know, you could put a stem up the middle and do a bit of a variegation here. What's a posh word, isn't it? Variegate the leaves. You get this sort of darker streak down the middle. And again, just overlapping that colour. You can see that's shown through. Must play with this set, says Claire. I'm guessing Claire has this. Now, and then with these ones, I like to just outline one side of the leaf. These leaves are rather gorgeous. And they could be any colour. I don't think that, you know, the leaves have got to be green. Just saying. Jumping in for a bit, I always enjoy your, you sharing your talent. Thank you from Ohio, USA. Deborah, lovely to have your company. And thank you for your lovely comment. You can jump in any time. <laughs> Hi, Laurie. Good to see you. I see you sneaking in there. Now, if you wanted that a bit darker, you can always go back in again. Or if you feel that the the light bit is taken over a bit, a bit much. And give it another layer. 
That's quite nice actually. I'm just going to blend that in again. There you go. The joy of the blend. Look at that. Stunning. So how are we doing on the old time? Half an hour, right? So I didn't know whether just to leave today as a colouring technique class or whether to actually cut these out and make something from them. So you might want to stick around if you can. But if you're watching this on replay, you might want to totally fast forward all the colouring. Because I think <laughs> when you're watching somebody colour live, it's different from watching the replay. <laughs> Don't know about you. I feel that sometimes. I think it's all right if I'm watching somebody doing it there and then. But sometimes I haven't got time to watch them. If I'm trying to catch up on some videos, I'm like, I haven't got time to sit and watch somebody colour. But uh, give colouring a go. I think it, it could be very... You might fit, you know, you might not be able to sit and colour a whole book or a page of colouring. Um, I know it's not always my cup of tea to do that. But when it comes to stamping, you kind of get to choose what you want to colour and how much and what colours. And I think with the blends, they colour in a lot quicker. Whereas if you're doing a colouring book, it tends to be colouring pencils. So, um... It's just, yes, yeah, a bit of a quicker process. What colour is this green, please? So this, this particular green I'm using here is Just Jade. I've used for these leaves here. And the one I've used on that one is Soft Succulent. Now, as you can see, I'm losing the inside of it. So I'm going to just come back in and give that a bit more colour to that. Sometimes you've just got to give it a chance to soak in. Um, to see what the colour is going to do, so sort of give it a chance to do its thing. There you go. Okay, I think we should get these chopped up. So before I um, chop those up, I want to show you that here's one I made earlier. Completely different colours, but, and this was the colour palette I was going to use again, but I thought why? Why use the same colour palette when we can change it up? So there you can see a real lovely variegation of the pinks and the oranges. So I think I've used um, Flirty Flamingo and Pale Papaya for that one. And then I've also used Flesh Freesia and Highland Heather for those ones. And then that one's Soft Succulent. So completely different look. Same stamp set, different colours. Um, and this lovely, pretty decorative dye in the background also comes in that set. So although I have covered it up a lot, it embosses and so it leaves some of these leaves hanging in there and it die cuts. So you've got this lovely stitching and you've got the bits that cut out and you've got bits that hang on. It's lovely. And I've used these new metallic um, embellishments, which was from the masculine set that was available on the pre-order. So let's see, here we go. And the other lovely thing we have in here, which I, attracted me to this set, is these lovely kind of notebook binding edges here. So this is the die I was talking about that I use in the background for that. And so we've got dies that match this big flower here, that match the roses. Janice's dyes are lost in space somewhere. Oh no, <laughs> that's not good. And these little buttercuppy type ones. And there are some more um, other flowers in this set as well. These little sort of bouquet ones here. But yeah, that's the background one I was referring to. So let's go ahead and chomp these out. Because we might as well. I tell you what happens: it's sit, sit at my desk and not turn into a card if I didn't do it. So let's see if we can get these in the little mini, in the little mini machine. No, it won't go in. <laughs> card is a little bit too thick. Oops, the daisies. Okay, let's. 
drop it down this way. Now, if you are scared of your dies moving, you can pop them in place with a post-it note or a um, piece of washi tape or um, some low-tack tape or a bit first so you can just put it across your skin or on your clothing. But I tend to just brave it and just go for it anyway. Oh, my hand was falling off. How did that happen? How did that happen? Oh, great, on a live as well. <laughs> I think it's just the things come loose. <laughs> Let's try again. Oh, that's weird. That's never happened to me before. <laughs> Well, I fixed it. <laughs> oh, no worries, Deborah. Lovely to see you. Thank you for your company. There. Oops, that one slipped. Oh, don't. Never mind. That's why you should tack it down. <laughs> Esther's very lazy and doesn't tack it down. I got distracted. Right. Get my other die. I think just because generally you can see if they've moved, so I just tend to go carefully. Nobody told me the leaf had moved though, did they? There we go. Oh, it's done it again. The leaf has moved, I can see it. <laughs> I think it's because it's at the very end. Right. You won't make the same mistake twice. Look at my lovely bunch of flowers. Okay, okay, I admit defeat. I'll get up and post it. They're only over here. Got no excuse. I think it's more the leap. The, the smaller the dies, the more likely they are to move. See if that will stay in place. Claire's watching in silence, so she won't be able to hear me say that, will she? <laughs> See, that just helps to hold the dies in place. And it doesn't leave any tacky behind. Now, the good news is, in the new Stampin' Up! catalogue, I don't know if you guys have spotted it, especially if you're a demonstrator, but um, the magnetic plates are making a comeback, which is exciting and very pleasing. So I could just reuse this post-it. That leaf is a bit close, so I'm not going to try and attempt that as well. Valerie told me to the screen as if I could hear her. Next time Valerie, just shout a bit louder, I might be able to hear you. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Okay, one more leaf guys. One more leaf. So I don't know if you noticed but I actually turned over my plate before I did the second round of die cutting. This just helps stop your plates from warping. And I do it to the top plate as well. If you just turn it round after you've used them. What are they, says Margaret? What's what, Margaret? The magnetic plates, is that what you mean? Um, magnetic plates go... Um, you can use it with your cutting and boss machines. And so rather than trying to keep your dies in place, it's magnetic. 
so the dies will snap in place to the magnets to stop it from moving. So when the catalogue um, goes live with all the goodness in it in May, that's when you can order them. I hope that's what you mean, because <laughs> that's what I'm explaining. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, now we have our lovely... Oh, I've forgotten the leaf. I'm, I'll just add the leaves in afterwards, alright folks, because I feel like we need to get on and do some sticking or something. Let's just see where this takes us. Okay. I'm going to do a nice, maybe like a C-shaped design. Could colour that in, can I? Do something like that. Oh, you know, I come here. <laughs> you must have a look, it will make life easier. Yes, it would, indeed. Okay, I think I'm going to use that lovely dye again. Now, before I lose all these lovely beauties, I'm just going to get my magnetic plate out. And I think, oh, actually, I could use, could use this notepad-y one as well. Hmm. Okay, let's use this one again. We'll do the notepad one another time. Now that I've put that down, I'm going to take them all off. Oh, that's just a little, oh, is that going to go through? <laughs> it's a bit tight, but I'm going to see if I can do it. No, I want that to look at things upside down isn't the easiest way of doing it. So if I come over here a bit more, see if it will squash through. Go on, in you go. Go on, you can do it. Got to talk to your paper, you know. Oh, I think my handle is a bit fragile after it's popped out just now. Got to look after it a bit better. I need to look at fixing that. Oh, it's popped out again. Oh dear, I might have to contact Stampin' Up to find out what's going on with my handle. Looks good. I love it, says my mum. Oh, thank you. I thought you might like these deeper colours. Okay, so what happens is you get left with all these lovely little bits and I tend just to use my card to scrape that off my plate and into the bin. Okay, and then she says, um, let's just find a piece of card. Okay, I've got a crease down the side, which I'm going to get out. I'm just going to ruffle up the paper a little bit. Get my die cut brush. Get out any little bits and pieces. Now remember, those little, some of the petals will stay put because they are meant to. Ouch! <laughs> Stabbed myself with a ruler. They are meant to be there, but then you can also go in and just knock out any bits that oh look that's the majority that's not bad that's not bad at all okay so I'm thinking we've got one of our nice oops. Everything's falling on the floor. A bit of a crafter lunch going on. Now I'm just going to cover those up because I don't want those to get splattered. Oh, that's a strong colour. Very juicy pen. That was the Blackberry Bliss. Very juicy indeed. And because I can, 
what should we do? Should we use the use the purpley colour on the edge? Do, do, do. I think just this just helps to take a plain piece of white card and turns it into something else. Excuse the squeaky table. And the other thing you can do is give a little bit of a crease. So putting my thumbs in the centre and just add, you know, just don't be scared to add a bit of dimension to those flowers. Just going to give these some stems in case they show. Now, to save time, I'm not going to pop these up on dimensionals right now, but you can do that afterwards or if you have more time. But I, I feel like I've spent a lot of time on the colouring, so I'm going to go ahead and stick this together. So you've got a nice focal point with the big purple camellia re type flower. We've got our lovely red roses. I'd like to grow some roses. And we've got our, I don't know, primrosey one here. Then we're going to cascade a couple down here. Just bend it a little bit. So I'm using my silicone mat to protect my work surface. Because the glue is going to go through the holes. Now you don't want this sort of, you know, the stems to be too straight. You know, you don't want one coming straight out the other because naturally, you know, flowers would bend a bit more on things. So. And by, sometimes by the time you go to stick your arrangement, it's, the look has changed to what you were going to do. So, like I said, I might come back and just add some more foliage, I think. Add some more greenery. But for the time being, yes, I think I'll do that instead. Gonna stick these in. So don't be scared to overlap your flowers also, you know, remember in a natural flower arrangement you'd have things overlapping slightly. You wouldn't see every flower for its own. Cassie says she's coming really, really late, but looks good and we'll catch up on the beginning later. Oh no, you're on your sick bed. It's not COVID, good. Good. Oh well, I hope wishing you a very speedy recovery. Cassie and thank you for popping on to say hello. Okay, so you could put a sentiment in here. I'm going to leave that for now. Just want to see what it looks like on. Now, I've just cut these mats down. I haven't actually... These are the beautiful new ink colours. Now, if you're a regular customer of mine or if you normally get a catalogue from me, you'll get one in the post. I've put some in the post. Um, if you don't normally get a catalogue from me and you'd like a paper copy, then please do get in touch. Um... I just want to see what that looks like against that lovely orchid oasis colour or the starry sky colour. Just want to see. Or the sweet sorbet. I think these others might be a bit too bright. Yes, just goes to show how they look. Um, let's pick out a couple of colours from here. This is rich raspberry. That's quite nice because your eye focuses on the purple. Or oh, this is the deeper um, blackberry bliss, which is such a lovely deep purple colour. So remember what I say to you about colour. You know, if you're going to choose, say, a um, colour to match that, your eye tends to get drawn to the edges. Or if you do a red colour, your eye might get drawn to that. You could go for a neutral colour. So um, I've used Pool Party for the other one. 
or oh what about just J oh this is nice soft succulent that's quite nice because it kind of neutralizes everything um and I will put in some more greens so you won't see that I quite I think I prefer the lighter color actually so there's the one I made earlier slightly different well it is a different arrangement and it gives you an idea of what you can do that beautiful new hues of happiness stamp set which I've momentarily lost off my desk uh, it's on my floor desk that's why <laughs> happiness abounds sorry use of happiness is the whole uh, suite is called that and you've got these lovely lovely sentiments really usable best wishes happy birthday um congratulations things like that i mean what i could do is oh could we have the card this way around would that work let's audition it so i could have the card this way um which means if I did the card that way, I would put my sentiment in this corner here. If I put it in the centre, because the, the flowers are heavily balanced there, it would look a bit odd. But what you're doing is a sort of invisible triangle. So you need to come down in this corner here to put your sentiment. Trust me, it would look better. <laughs> there you go so don't forget you can turn your cards around I think sometimes we tend to well I know I tend to go to this kind of um, shape style card now just one last thing before you go if you didn't like the white edges around the die cutting you can use your pens to, to create an outline or go around them in black um, it depends on what you what look you want to go for um, but you you can go around the edge of your dies with the pen. There's a YouTube video I've done using the mice and the rain boots that shows you how to do that so you can check that out on YouTube. Thank you for joining me today. Lovely to be back and lovely to have your company. I'll be back on your screens tonight at nine o'clock. Um, I've seen a demonstration by another demonstrator um, yesterday and I want to go ahead and give that a go. What she's done so that's what I'm going to say. <laughs> Very vague. You'll have to come back at nine o'clock tonight to find out what I'm doing over on YouTube. So thank you very much. I don't know if I'll use this set again. I might use a, a different stamp set. I'll just see how it goes. Thank you. Great tip, says Deb. Oh, fantastic. Thank you, Deb. Lovely to see you all. Have uh, Enjoy the rest of your day and take care don't forget you can uh, shop through me if you don't already have a demonstrator of your own and if you're living in england france germany austria or the netherlands you could do that and if you're in those countries then i can send you out a paper catalogue and i'll do that for free so do get in touch drop me a message or send me an email at stampinstarcreations at gmail.com ruth has popped on and said nice earrings well I wonder where I got these from. <laughs> these, these have got a really nice dangle, actually, I must admit. These are um, handmade by Ruth herself. So, uh, yeah, let's just give her, there you go. She's made them out of modelling clay. Yes, and did I say England? Yes, I mean the UK. I consented the UK, Scotland, Wales, England, Ireland. <laughs> Lots of love. Take care all. <laughs> Bye for now.